Hi, it's Tom Gregory here, and welcome to this video about automating Docker builds with Gradle. And it feels like everybody's using Docker these days, either to improve their development practices or for deploying into microservice-based environments. When you're writing a Docker project, the best way that I've found to embed repeatable processes to build, run, tag, or push your images is to use the build automation tool itself. One of the best build automation tools is Gradle. And all of this can be done by setting up Gradle tasks to do exactly what we need. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to do that with real life examples, which you can follow along with as well, if that's your thing. So let's jump right into it. In order for us to be able to build, run, tag and push images from Gradle, we're going to have to add some extra tasks to our projects. If you're familiar with Gradle, you'll know the easiest way to do that is to apply plugins. Fortunately, a plugin exists just for this purpose called the Palantir Docker plugin. This exposes a whole load of tasks which integrate with the Docker installation on your machine. All we have to do is to add some minimal configuration to our build file so it knows what to do. In this example, we'll use an application I built earlier, which you can download from the link provided. It's just a Java jar file containing a Spring Boot application, which you can run with the Java command. I'm going to create an empty directory for this example and copy the jar file over. I can run it to see how it behaves with the java-jar command. Here you can see the output and I can head over to localhost 8080 slash do it to check that it's running correctly. I'm not sure if this is a true statement or not, but it's the best I could come up with. If you're following along with this video, make sure to have a version of Gradle installed from gradle.org and add the installation directory to your path environment variable. You'll also need the Java home environment variable to point to your Java installation. Oh, and one more thing, don't forget to install Docker as well from docker.com. We won't get far without that. Now that you've seen the application running, let's get it working inside a Docker image. First off though, we'll have to set up Gradle in this directory using the Gradle init command. Now I've run that command, I have all the Gradle configuration set up here, including the build Gradle file and the Gradle wrapper script for executing Gradle tasks. Gradlew.bat is for running on Windows, Gradlew is for running on Linux, Mac or if you're running on Windows Git Bash, like me. Next up, we need a Docker file, which is just a text file where we'll put the instructions to tell Docker how to build our image. There's no file extension, so I'll just create a file with the name Docker file. In this file, I'm going to add just three instructions. The from instruction tells Docker that this image is based on the OpenJDK 12 Alpine base image. This means we'll be using Alpine Linux, which is a lightweight and fast. It's bundled up with a Java installation, so we don't have to worry about installing it separately. Copy will copy the application jar file into the image. And lastly, CMD tells Docker what command to run when we start a container of this image. In our case, we just want to run Java specifying the jar file. Now it's time to get our hands dirty with the plugin I mentioned earlier, the Palantir Docker plugin for Gradle. Let's configure it to create the image from the Docker file we just made. First up, apply the plugin itself. Add a project version as we want to use this within the name of our image. We'll now specify a configuration for the plugin to build the image. It goes in the Docker config block. We'll use the project name and version for the name of this image. The files property specifies which files should be available to our Docker file, because by default nothing is exposed. Under the hood, the plugin copies these files into a temporary directory, exposing only these files to the docker build command. We can now try out building the image by running Gradle W Docker. Docker images now shows the new image on my machine. 
To run the image as a container, we'll need to add another plugin. It's part of the same suite of plugins, but the author decided to make the plugins as fine grained as possible so we're not adding more to our projects than we need to. Thanks, Palantir. We'll also need a specific configuration for running the container, which comes under the Docker Run config block. This configures the plugin to create a container with the given name, using the same image we configured earlier. We're connecting to port 8080 on the container, as this is what our application uses, and exposing that on the host, also on port 8080. It's useful to include the clean true property, so that when you stop the container, it gets automatically removed as well. Now we can run the container using Gradle W Docker Run. Docker PS is now showing our running container and we can access the application on localhost 8080 slash do it. Now that you've seen how to build images and run containers, it's worth thinking about how this fits into your full build process. Consider the scenario where you want to build an application on your continuous integration server. You want to make sure to run Gradle W build docker to build the application and docker image, but to get it deployed elsewhere, it needs to be pushed to a central location so that other Docker installations can access it. For this purpose, I'm going to use Docker Hub, which allows you to create public or private repositories where you can store your images. Of course, there are many other options available, including AWS's Elastic Container Registry, or ECR. Just so you don't get confused with all this Docker lingo, a Docker repository is where you put different versions of a specific image such as the Gradle Docker example we just created. On the other hand, a Docker registry is where many repositories live, such as in the Docker Hub. I'm going to use my Docker Hub account, which I set up earlier, but if you're following along with this video, you can set up an account at hub.docker.com. You'll then need to go to repositories and set yourself up a repository called gradle-docker-example. Docker's mechanism to push an image to a central repository involves first tagging the image with the repository name, then pushing it. The Palantir Docker plugin exposes two more types of tasks for this purpose, Docker tag and Docker push. Let's extend the Docker configuration to specify the tag. And don't forget to replace TK Gregory here with your own username. Note that there are two values passed to the tag configuration. The first is a name to use to refer to this tag, and the second is the repository name itself with a version. When I run Docker tasks, we can see that there are now more tasks available. The Docker hub string we put in the tag configuration earlier is used to dynamically generate the tasks Docker tag Docker hub and Docker push Docker hub. That's quite a mouthful, really. Let's run Gradle W Docker Tag Docker Hub. Then let's check the output from Docker Images. You can now see that we have two versions of the image we created before with the same image ID. The new version of the image has an external repository pointing at my Docker Hub account and a tag of the application version. In order to push, I'll first have to authenticate with the Docker Hub by running Docker Login. The last step is to run Gradle W Docker Push Docker Hub. Now we can see the image being pushed to the central registry. Now that the image exists on a central registry, it can be run from whatever server we like by just specifying the correct repository in the docker run command. Let's try it out by first deleting all references of the image from my machine here. When I run docker run, you can now see it's failed to find the image locally and is instead pulling it from the docker hub. Note that I don't need to log in again as it's using the same credentials from my original login. Good news! It's pulled the image and run the container just like before. So now you've seen how to create images, run containers, tag and push, all using simple Gradle tasks. This is a really nice way to integrate Docker into your build process 
and makes it really easy for other developers to get started or to set up a continuous integration pipeline. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can also find it in written form at my blog, tomgregory.com. You'll find the link below along with a link to the complete source code on GitHub. Also, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and you can also subscribe to see future videos I'll make on related topics if you're interested in that. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time on Tom Gregory Tech.